Fighter, you ready? Combate Global! Oh, what a punch! What an incredible fight! Can you believe what you just saw? We have a champion! And there you have it, the great scene. Miami. Of Miami Beach. I was gonna really call it South Beach. It's city of Miami Beach. That's what it is. There's no South Beach. It's just an area. Get it right. But welcome. Miami has been the home of Combate Global and La Jaula. Rodolfo Roman alongside El Jefe, Mr. Campbell McLaren, getting ready to call the action. And as we know, Campbell, the prelims here on Paramount Plus, they are always exciting just as the main card. You don't want to miss a second. And we're going to start it off with the ladies with Natalie Schlesinger, who returns to La Jaula, taking on the debut of Stephanie Hernandez from Idaho. Not too many MMA fighters, big time, well known from Idaho, other than when they could think of Scott Jurgensen, Jared Rochelle, they're just some of the few that come into name. So she's trying to put herself on that list. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think we probably have some fighters that wrestled in Idaho at college. But uh, you're right, not many Idaho fighters. And with that, Campbell, let's go ahead and take it to a ring announcer, Miss Beatrice Callis. Entering La Jaula, Natalie Schlesinger! Natalie Schlesinger, as you can see, all the way from New Jersey, Campbell. She returned to La Jaula last time we saw her compete was against Gorelli Reyes. She won by decision, and looking at that fight, she had the opportunity to finish off. Many options there to submit her opponent, but she left it to the judges. This time around, Campbell, I'm sure she's going in for the win very early on in this fight. Yeah, I think she's uh, she knows what she's facing here. I, just, I don't want to say it's a win or go home, but yeah, actually it is a win or go home. That's a lot of pressure, Campbell, when you <laughs> she have a head me, to get home. She didn't hear me. <laughs> but she comes in with that background of the stand-up game. She's well-rounded. She does have some ground stuff as well. And what made the difference in that fight against her, to Harley Reyes was the ground game. Again, she had many opportunities to submit her opponent, but she couldn't finish it off. The key here that's going to be, Campbell, keeping that fight at the top because her opponent is a striker. She loves to strike. She loves to get in the pocket and trade blows. But let's go ahead and introduce her opponent, Beatrice Callis. Take it away. Su oponente, Stephanie Hernandez. Stephanie Hernandez making her debut. That face says it all. She's focused. She's determined to get that victory inside La Jaula for the first time in her career. The biggest stage, Campbell. This young lady training out of the SBG Idaho. As we see that camp has made their way here to the States. We've had some fighters from the SBG from different territories of the States. And this young lady packs a punch, Campbell. Yeah, the team's pretty excited about her, Rodolfo. I sure am, and I've seen some of their competition, Campbell, and what stands out is when you get in the pocket with this young lady, she is not afraid to throw blow. You give her one, she'll give you 30. She has the heart of a lion, and there's no way of stopping her, and she has a very strong chin, and you're gonna need it against Natalie, who packs a punch, Campbell. Yeah, let's, uh, I, this could be very, 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 very good early in their careers, uh, but there's still a lot on the line here. I think when folks come in for our prelims, they know it's an audition of sorts. It's a way to gain experience. It's a way to gauge the, uh, the, That's the, the head line to head of head opponents. 24 30 for her to fight them. Beatrice Gallis. Let's go ahead and introduce our fighters here in La Jaula. Y arrancamos con mucha más acción las reglas de la jaula. Tres vueltas de cinco minutos, tres jueces, utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos. Este duelo en la división peso átomo de Sbaud. In the atom weight division, los jueces son the judges are Richard Green, Theodore Crudger, and Dorian Mirasola. 
Y ahora llegó el momento de un combate global. In the blue corner, la esquina azul, wearing blue, vestida de azul. Su peso oficial, 106 libras, el oficio of weight. 106 pounds, con un récord de dos victorias y una derrota, with a record of two victories and one defeat, from Woodbridge, New Jersey, Natalie Schlesinger. In the red corner, en la esquina roja, wearing red, vestida de rojo, su peso oficial, 105.8 libras, her official weight, 105.8 pounds, con dos victorias y solo una derrota, from Boise, Idaho, Stephanie Hernández. El referee, Christopher Miñoki. Have a good, clean fight. I want you to protect yourself at all times, and please obey my commands at all times. If you want to touch once, go ahead. Good luck to the boy. Chris McNochi, the third man in La Jaula. Natalie Shenzhen returning. And, 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 and Beatrice was okay, the are first woman ring fight, announcer are you ready? in fight. La Jaula. As you can <laughs> All right, we just had a moment here. Don't worry about that, guys. The whole point is that Natalie Shanzi here returning to La Jaula. Stephanie Hernandez making her debut, Campbell. Starting off that feel-out process right from the start. Natalie, you can see a lot of that boxing, the background that she has. And a lot of concentration. Look how ferocious she looks. It looks like she does want to engage. Yeah, she's fierce. She's determined to get this victory in her debut. Hernandez coming out of the SBG Idaho team. Trains with Vera Artiega. When you train with people like that, they prepare you for fights like these. You know, so much of that nerves, that butterfly come into play, Campbell, when it's your first fight in such a setting. To put that aside and really focus on what is at stake against Snally, who's already been here, has that experience. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think what uh, Combate does uh, well is bring in new fighters and new folks and give them a good intro and let them know that the team is behind them and, you know, they got to do their job, but we're, we're here to make, uh, make their entry as smooth as possible. But the competition, as you stated, Campbell, that's what makes Combate Global different. We got that young blood. It's a new playlist, and that's that takedown for Natalie. Same thing she did to Jaherity. To Harley Reyes, but now can she finish the fight, or will she leave it leave it to the judges? Watch the fingers. Watch the fingers, Blue. Yeah, I'm glad Chris mentioned that. I, that, that looked like a, a almost an eye poke. She threw a couple elbows too. There's some elbows coming into play into guard here. Natalie trying to position her arms. Stephanie though as well, looking in to see what she could. Get off of this position. She would prefer to be to have this fight on the feet where she can trade blows. As you can see Natalie just positioning her shoulder right by Stephanie. There's already blood coming out. I can't see it from where, Campbell. Uh, yeah, I think that's the, the, those elbows. The elbows, right? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yep. Right on the left side, the left eyebrow of Stephanie. So that won't be an issue as far as impacting the vision. And it doesn't seem too deep, just a lot of... Well, lot of Natalie seems out. to be working it, though. Very smart on her end. And we may even go here for a takedown again or a slam. No, positioning herself right to La Jaula. Wrapping herself here. Now, the thing is, Campbell, when looking at this position, Natalie holding on to that grip does take away some energy. We're very early on into this round, though. Wow, like a bloody mess. We've only been here three minutes into this <laughs> the blood first is flowing. round. It's like a horror movie. Look, Natalie's trying to shift her weight onto her opponent so that she saves some of her energy, right? She's making her opponent really hold her up there. One thing that points out uh, Campbell is Stephanie. She's, it's, it's like she's figuring out that puzzle, right? To get her off her back. And has her mouth open, and that's usually a sign of that exhaustion. Yeah. 
And now it's flipping gears here for Natalie. Now we're going to the clinch. Knee shots there by Stephanie. Natalie, good way of using La Haula to posture her body to get out and transition on her position. How many fights does Natalie have for us? This she, is her second yeah, I mean, she competition looks, here. She looks very calm, very collected at this point. And, and that's all you need, right, Campbell? You just need that one to get yourself situated, familiarized. And she took on Jaharli Reyes, who had that strong background in the stand-up. Stop, stop, stop. You right here. You're going to check that cut. Right here. Now, it is right by the eyebrow. Nah. Don't know how deep it is, though. No, I'm not supposed to no second-guess the referees, but I don't. Right, no, it's not impeding her vision yeah, or anything. It's off on the yeah. side. It's above her eyebrow. Thank you, Doc. Doc said, right here, right here. Right here. No, right Doc agreed with me. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, safety measures, just for precaution. But you're right. It wasn't too much of an, an issue there for her vision. She can continue on with the round. Look, it's all good. The refs uh, look to the fighter safety. Right. That's all fine. Trading blows there for Natalie. It's coming in with those hooks. She loves to throw those hooks, so look for that. If Stephanie is not careful enough putting those hands up, she could meet those hooks. And she does have power, Natalie. Once more into guard. Yeah, Natalie wanted to do a takedown in the middle of La Haula. Which is a smart thing to do, and as you pointed out earlier, Campbell, she is smashing on that cut. And there it is as we get ready for the second chapter of the round. She escapes. Oh, my. Oh, boy. And she oh. lives to live another round. We'll be back. Second round. Can't be striking in that position. You know better. We gotta protect the arm first, okay? Three. We'll let you know how the round goes in the beginning. All right. Close round. I need you to commit to your strikes. You're not listening to me for that matter. Okay? Start low, finish high. Take down to be there. But you have to watch out on the ground, right? We gotta pass, right? Wrist control, elbows, and bicep control. Stay, stay steady. Three. You're doing great. The take down there, but now it's just another thing. Top L day, right? Deep breath, top L day in Madison's. You gotta get up. Go, go, go. Get you up. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome back. Second round. Yeah, was, that was saved by the bell the first round. Absolutely. Don't you think? She really I mean, got lucky. She had that yeah. arm there locked in, yeah. and if it wasn't for that bell, I don't know where Natalie would be at this point. Maybe we would have. Hernandez's hands raised, but listen, here we are, second but round. But that's got to be a great boost for Stephanie, right? She realizes she got her in that, put her in a great deal of danger. Um, Natalie's probably thinking this over. And, you know, rightfully so. Natalie is going to go for the takedown, as we saw earlier in the first round. So Stephanie has here the recipe, knows where to stop her. The point is, can she get in here earlier, not with just a few seconds left in the round? That's a nice right. Very much. And again, you don't want to stand and brawl with Stephanie. She's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you, and she's not going to stop, and she has a very strong chin. Your way of Natalie measuring using those feints. Yeah. Stephanie was just not having any of that. Stephanie's got an okay head movement. You know, we see such crappy head movement in MMA, right? It, we Boxing, do. it's beautiful. And I'll tell you why, but here's the open scoring favoring How here, Natalie. Yeah. Yeah. Until the very end. Never leave it to the judges. Until the last five seconds. <laughs> but, but back to your point, Campbell, about the head movement. And you're absolutely right. It's very hard to use those head movements like in boxing and MMA. And, and that's because you could be met with a kick. Yeah. <laughs> and, you yeah, know, no, or a takedown. Or a takedown. Yeah. But you know what? One, one that stands out right now, and I've seen in combat, is Kayla Rocco. She does it very well. She does have good movement with a head, head and, and then using it, putting it all together in MMA. Kayla's going to be a force. She's going to be, she's going to be very hard uh, to beat on. 
any sort of regular basis. Yeah, look at this. And that's that back and forth yep. I was speaking about, Campbell. They love, especially Hernandez, she loves to go toe to toe, right from the head to the body. Now she got that heart of a lion, that warrior. There's something that Natalie does not want to do, rather go take it to the ground. And you can see here, her corner. Watch trying to work low. on that body, and that's what Hernandez is doing. Those body shots, you know, many people think, right, if you're watching MMA, if you're watching Gobate for the first time, it's not always about striking the head. You have to work the body. You're gonna break down that person. Great overhand there by Hernandez. Kill the body, the head will follow. That is absolutely right. The way the, you see the, the pace of Natalie slowing down compared to that first round. Definitely. Hernandez, that last, the ending to that first round, that boost of motivation can be seen here. What is uh, Natalie's wrestling background? Natalie, Does she have any? Yeah, Natalie trains with the Driven Jim Woolbridge and the Carnicella MMA. Of course, they have a full rounded system out there. But primarily that background of striking is there. As you can see the numbers, where Schlesinger throwing in that 45 to 31 punches compared to the kicks. Hernandez with 11 and three, and the takedown going to Natalie with two over one. Yeah, I just wasn't seeing in, the, in Natalie a lot of uh, great body positioning. And I wasn't seeing that she had a good sense of where she was when she went to the ground. Yeah, not, not targeting the right position. She was working that cut in the guard. But that was pretty much it. Oh, it's more like she lost her footing there. Not much because of a strike. But Natalie positioning, but she's not, you know, the, just the stamina is not there right now. She's calculating, calculating, but not doing much. And there's that takedown attempt. Hernandez, good way of putting her body out of the way to La Jaula to use that to impede Natalie from taking her down. And Campbell, one thing about combat is the great action, right, of, of these females that they have delivered. Uh, and we have so many rising stars. Talked about earlier about Maritza Sanchez, who's, who's been a stud. Uh, Melissa Amaya, undefeated. Yeah, and, and Maritza, we've been trying to find a, a worthy opponent, give her the belt, let her fight for the belt, of course, but uh, they're not lining up to fight Maritza. That tells you something, Campbell. She's a force to be reckoned with. We see Natalie in the blue and Stephanie in the red. 14 seconds left in this round. And there's that toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That's what Hernandez loves. Natalie throws in that desperate moment of going to the takedown. Few seconds left in the round. We live to see another round. It's tired, okay? But we can't slow down, okay? This is not your opportunity to rest. I need you coming forward with those feet, okay? When you take that little extra step in, we're hitting, all right? And she's backing up. She's touching the legs. Keep your bounce. I need your level, okay? So she, she rests, we'll take down the tent, okay? You don't let her rest, okay? We push the base. This is our fight, okay? We finish it. We can finish it, okay? Doesn't like the body shots. She's not fast enough, okay? She's not fast enough. Her gas tank's there. We're not there, okay? But we got to push it, all right? Push yourself. Push yourself. You don't get tired. You understand? You have to all for your stripes. Not just a random shot, but listen to my mom. When I call her mom. Right? She covers like this, that's when you shoot. Okay? I need this round. I need this round. All right, and we go the third round of this opening bout here this evening. Gombate Gulban live on Paramount Plus. And you heard the corner of Natalie. I need this round. We'll yep. wait the open scoring. But Campbell, the uh, pace he's picked up. Yeah, they got. Come on, show us something, ladies. I know you're both. Uh, I know you both got a lot of heart, and you both want it. But there comes a time you got to show you want it, not just say you want it. You know, sometimes you're cautious, right? Because you want to protect that record. I get it. 
but sometimes you're given that opportunity and you want to show what you're about. And this is the opportunity. You're in the big stage. Yeah, you got to bring it. it. I mean, <laughs> you know. This is the biggest opportunity here. It's definitely for Hernandez. But Natalie, she's been already on this stage. She's been, she's very familiar with La Jaula. Great spinning back fist that attempt nice. there by Hernandez. She yeah, heard I, the cue, great work of working the body. Natalie positioning Stephanie towards La Jaula. But yeah, something has to be done here. They need to pick up the pace. Natalie looking towards the corner, listening. You know, the exhaustion, of course, is already here. You're in the third round. But this is what you train for, Campbell, right? You train for those 15, those 25 minutes to bring it on. That is the open scoring, even Stevens. And I, I could see that in that second round, that, you know, rightfully so. I think uh, the judges in the first round thought it was more Natalie. And, right. And, and then in the second round, they saw, mm -hmm. no. Natalie looked a little cool and collected. Kind of an exchange here, right? They're exchanging. You're once and fourth now. Hernandez have that strong chin. Natalie, she knows what that power Stephanie has. Quickly changed gears and went for the attempt. Uh, the attempt of taking her down just didn't go her way. And there she goes to the floor. Now, what can she do? We saw that in the last time when she had Reyes in this very position for the rear naked choke. Can she finish it off? That's something that she had been preparing for. I, you know, I can see better looking through the cage and looking on her monitor, but Stephanie's chin is pretty in there tight. Yeah. It, she doesn't have the choke. Yeah, good positioning on Hernandez. Though, but putting that chin down, making it very difficult. What she's not, what Natalie's not doing is you're throwing in those loopy punches, trying to get Stephanie to open up to stink, sink it in. Most of it has to do too because of the positioning of Lahal. Her back is into it. Her left hand is down. Can't do much. She does have that figure four lock. That's fine. No, the lock is good, but yeah. her upper body is not doing much. The upper body, right? She can't not going to gain leverage. Now she's giving her back. Now Stephanie is in deep waters here, Campbell. Can she get out of this? So far, she's doing great, pushing, positioning her hips, keeping her chin down to avoid getting caught. And I think Stephanie's more powerful. Her upper body strength looks uh, significantly yeah, better. Of the, two, of the two, she is the most strongest for that power. And now Hernandez laying in yeah. some vicious shots from that position. Got less than a minute to, minute and a half to go. You hear Natalie's corner to sink in that right elbow but good way of Hernandez pushing her head towards La Jaula. And as you stated, Campbell, that positioning of Natalie is just not there for her to do anything. And she goes down and Hernandez pulling away. I, I thought Stephanie was running for the door for a second there. She just wanted to get up and get a little distance, come back in and punch. All right, come on, ladies. They got 44 seconds, Campbell, to show what they're all about. Who wants it the most? Natalie, not a lot of footwork. Hernandez just moving in very linear, but attacking her full. Great stuff from that clinch. Need to see maybe some knees sneaking an elbow. Hernandez in laying some knees in the uh, hamstring area and in the rib, but not much, Campbell. Not much. There's that oh, elbow she stuck in there. Shot. That maybe did it for her. And now they're laying it all in, but they know that they got that less than 10 seconds to go. They got to impress someone. And we'll be back for the results between Hernandez and Schlesinger. Who takes it? It's gonna be an interesting to see, Campbell. Uh, I don't know. Which of these ladies will take a victory inside La Hala? We'll be back with more.
There we have their three rounds of action. Let's find out who our winner is. Beatrice Callis has the result. Beatrice, let us know who took this, this fight. After three rounds of much more action, this is the final decision. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión final. All three judges turning identical scorecards of 28 to 29. Los tres jueces entregan tarjetas idénticas de 28 a 29. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Todos a favor del ganador. Por decisión unánime. Stephanie Hernandez! Stephanie Hernandez that's, makes her debut, takes the that's, victory. That's the right decision. It's the right, decision. right decision. I decision. I think that last round just proved to her who yeah. wanted the most in that trade, that exchange. She showed it, Campbell. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm impressed by SBG. You know, they're coming out of Ireland, and they're everywhere now. Really impressive stuff from this young lady. I'm sure we'll see her back inside La Hala. We'll be back with more action. Mucha más acción inside La Hala after the break. And we're back inside the Univision studio. Rogelio Melgoza. Taking on the return of Marcos Loreda. Marcos Loreda representing Spain, training out of Miami, Florida with the Freedom Fighters and Rogelio from Mexico. Coming in with a lot of great experience with the Jackson's MMA folks. And as you know, Jackson's MMA is a, uh, a decorated camp. Camp with some tough dudes and women coming out of that. But Marcos Loreda, he's coming off a victory. Last time we saw him inside La Jala. He's very confident. He said he's worked a lot on his cardio, on his stamina, to bring in everything that he's all about. Campbell, I'm sure that Marcos is here to make a statement. He's going to be cornered by Justin Vasquez. We'll be, be seeing him in action yeah, we'll see July him against 16th. Romero very soon. Oh, and that's going to be an awesome fight. You know, I love the Freedom Fighters. Uh, fighters, you know, uh, not the most well-known gym outside of Florida, but you know, Cuban run. They Cuban got some proud. savages. They have some savage out, out there. <laughs> and now let's make it official with the introductions of Loreda and Melagosa Beatrice Callas. Take it away. Entering La Jaula, Rogelio Melgosa. There he is, Rogelio Melgosa, making his debut inside La Jaula. First time he fights here in Combate Global. Big stage, big opportunity for him. Man who said that uh, he started off with grappling classes, Campbell, and then said, hey, let me go ahead and just give mixed martial arts a shot. He wanted to be that well-rounded fighter. And there he is. He has a lot of determination, a lot of gut, and a lot of grit to take on Marcos Lede. Uh, uh, no, that's right. His pancreation experience, is that Japan? Yep. No. Yeah. Okay. And, and, that's you know, the real deal. And those are some tough dudes. Yeah, no, no. It's maybe maybe it's a work, maybe it's not, but it's what they call a hard <laughs> a work. work. <laughs> well, one guy that's not a work is Loreda, who stands in his way, Beatrice Callas. Let us know about Marcos Loreda. His opponent, Marcos El Conquistador Lloreda. Marcos Lloreda used to be known as El Lobo, now El Conquistador. We get him confused with the Loba, but the Loba fights on August 5th. You want to tune in for that you, one, no, Campbell? No one, no one confuses <laughs> El Lobo with La Loba. No one. <laughs> Marcos Lloreda returning to action inside La Jaula. Last time we saw him compete was in October, won a split decision victory. But before that, we saw him against Colin Luberts, and it didn't go his way. When, when you look at his resume, Campbell. He'll win three, he'll win two, he loses one. So he's that type of fighter that doesn't 
have that consistency. He goes up and down, up I, and down. You know what? I, I gotta say this. I think Spain is like that. I think Mexico is the rising star in MMA. Not 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 just in Combate and that other that small operation. What is it called? The <laughs> UFC. So Mexico is definitely a force in MMA. Uh, we see Chile, Peru coming on very very strong. Spain is always. Is it there? Is it not there? We're about to find as you see the head to head there. Not that far as far as age is very similar. 6'2", same size. Weight 170 to 170.2. Beatrice Callis to the introduction. Continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo en la división peso welter. We continue with much more action. This bout in the welterweight division. Los jueces son the judges are Vicente Rodriguez. Richard Green Jr. and Theodore Crodger. Y ahora, llegó el momento de un combate global. In the blue corner, la esquina azul, vestido de verde, wearing green. Su peso oficial, 170 libras. His official weight, 170 pounds. With two, with five, defeats victories and four defeats, con cinco victorias y cuatro derrotas. From Albuquerque, New Mexico, Rogelio Mendoza. In the right corner, en la esquina roja, vestido de rojo, wearing red. Su peso oficial, 170.2 libras. His official weight, 170.2 pounds. Con 12 victorias y 8 derrotas. With 12 victories and 8 defeats. From the 305 Miami, Florida, Marcos El Conquistador. El referee, Judge Rogers. Bring it in, gentlemen, bring it in. You guys, we're going to have rules in the locker room. If there's any questions, ask them now. If not, listen to me at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Do everything you can within the rules to win. You want to touch gloves, touch them up. Go back to the corner, wait for the belt. There we have it. Rogelio Melgosa. You ready? And Marco Florida going toe-to-toe -to -toe in this 170-pound competition. Marco's no stranger to La Jaula. Oh, that's his footing there. Tried right to kick off the fight, Campbell, but Rogelio not phased with his debut inside La Jaula. You never know that this is his debut inside here tonight. Very confident to kick off the bout. Yeah, but Mexican fighters come in and they, they you know, They've had 18 fights. They're sometimes amateurs or whatever. They're, and, you know, it, it's not the same to be inexperienced from Mexico. Uh, that determination, uh, is that fight like a Mexican. Yeah. You know? I, you, know and I, you know, I think there's just such a proud tradition of aggressive fighting. I uh, just got a text from Michael Framowitz, the legendary uh, head of our fight operations. He said he's really looking forward to this one. He thinks they're going to bang. And uh, he thinks this is uh, the Spaniards' uh, chance to really show us something. Absolutely. These two, you can see it right now with those kicks and the fists thrown out there. They're not going to let anything go down the drain. They're going to throw everything to strike and be on target. And look, Marcos needs something to prove. The last one, the last victory he had was a split decision, right? Prior to that, he lost to Colin Lubert. And then before that, he was wrecking all his opponents. So he wants to get back on that track. But great kicking here for Rogelio, a guy who trains with the Jackson's MMA. He said for this camp, he's been doing some work with uh, Diego Brandao, Steve Garcia. All these guys are studs. As you mentioned earlier, Started out at the Valle Tudo gym in Ensenada, Mexico, with a the grappling, then transitioned into mixed martial arts. So this guy is as tough as they can get. Marcus Oleda now, top here with the guard, Rogelio. It's funny to mention though, Campbell, you know, prior to this, yeah, Marcos on uh, the social media accounts of Combate Global, he was showing the fans how to do a Peruvian necktie. He calls it the Spanish necktie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
You know, it's interesting to uh, uh, Jackson Jim. I think many Mexican fighters getting that kind of high level grappling training use it defensively. They still want to knock you out. And just training there, Campbell, with the elevation is just, it's a whole different diameter. Uh, yeah, unless you're coming that. from Mexico City. and then you're, you're used <laughs> to it, right. That's, don't remind me the first time I went to Mexico City. I thought I was yeah, having yeah. a panic attack. The then I found out, oh, that's right. <laughs> Marco Florida working in. Now the fight going back to the feet. And it, if this fight remains standing up, Afromowitz is absolutely right. They are going to stand and bang. There's Rogeli just throwing in. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, yeah, Campbell. That hurt. Campbell. That hurt. Campbell. He saw stars on that one. Holy moly. Great hook from Rogelio that brought Marcos to the ground. You know, when you look at the record of Rogelio, right, and, and compare it to Lodeda, Lodeda might say, eh. I go, this guy's a walk in the park, but you never underestimate your opponent. Anyone can have a bad day in the office. Well, fight business, punch your chance, right? Protect yourself at all times. And if you know your opponent is that scrappy type of fighter, that's a red flag. You need to keep your hands up. Don't get too comfortable. Get way of ripping that grip of Loreda. Pushing him to the ground. Loreda here working towards La Hala now, Rogelio. Loreda in guard. Good way of Rogelio landing in those elbows, uh, Campbell. You know, I think a lot of, there's a lot of MMA in Spain, but I, I am seeing when the guys come into combate, they get more challenged in combate uh, than they do in some of the regional you know, Spanish MMA organizations. Once he, once he starts climbing up that mountain. Yeah. But, you know, coming here to combate, whether it's a win or it's a loss, you learn these things and you take it back home. And that's how you're able to teach all your fellow teammates, you know, learn from your flaws. We, we've seen some guys and girls that come from Spain here, they'll lose. And the next time around, they're just phenoms. They're great. Yeah. No, there's a great uh, dedication and interest to MMA in Spain. Yes. Uh, we're wrapping up this first bout. Loreda. And Melgosa will be back with more action. All right. Back again here, Loreda. Melgosa's second round. What caught my attention here, Campbell, is that scrappiness from Melgosa and is catching yeah. Marcos off guard. You heard the corner here from Loreda use the jab. That's how you keep your opponent that does those type of maneuvers to keep him away. Because he'll could get you. Trust me, I do it myself, Campbell. That's why I know. <laughs> you speak from experience. <laughs> And, you know, those little tricks, you know, they, they come a long way, especially if you don't you know, expect it from your opponent. You know, so during the break, somebody said that Mark is a big fan of the early UFC days. That means he liked my work. <laughs> and he likes your new stuff, too. Yeah, he likes the <laughs> new stuff, too. Well, it needs to change here with Loreda. He needs to protect himself, and there it is, protecting himself more, keeping up those arms. There's the open scoring. First round going to Loreda. Well, that's, I think that's what we thought. Right. But he has to be cautious. He can't leave any openings there. But he goes as a tricky fighter. 
He does those type of thick things. Well, he'll tap your elbow oh. and follow up with a hook. Great weight takedown there for Lorena. And it seems, from what we've seen so far, that this is where Lorena has the advantage on the ground. He trains with, we mentioned, with a freedom fighter, with Ray Fundora, who's an exceptional, talented jiu-jitsu expert. Did Melgosa uh, think his opponent hit him in the back of the head? He seemed to grab the back of his head. I think he must have hit the cage. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> well, that position, right? When you go to the, to the howler, you're going to think anything, but yes, it was the howler that hit him, not uh, Loreda. <laughs> I was getting ready to <laughs> file a complaint. <laughs> Great knee That's there. Good knee. Yeah. Loreda's cardio coming into play, though. He seemed more the one with the endurance. Spoke to him this earlier. He said that, that that's what he's been working on. And Loretta's body position is good, too. He seems to have a really good sense of where he is in the grappling clinch. I've, I've been to that camp, Campbell. I, I've trained there at the uh, Freedom Fighters a couple of times. And I got to tell you that, Jim, uh, I don't know where the air condition is. <laughs> no, no, it's so. a very, it's, it's the original, like uh, Muhammad Ali was yeah. at Fifth Street Gym. Yeah. It's like there's no niceties no. in that gym. <laughs> no, <laughs> but you know what, gym. that's what makes them tough. Yeah. You don't need any fancy schmancy machinery. You just, you just need to go in there and get gritty and put the work in. Elbow there from Rogelio. Just an exchange here from this position from the guard for Loreda. Melgosa trying to land in some elbows, some shots where he can. Trying to just to be composed. But he needs to get on the feet. That's where he feels more comfortable. He saw there protecting his left side because he knew that. Oh, great stop there by nice. Loreda. Because Loreda is very sneaky. He could have. He's looking in a, a knee there. Now this is where he wants to fight. That's where Melgosa wants it, right here in the standing. Lorena though did land a shot. Woke up Melgosa. And Melgosa must have been slippery because Lorena just couldn't hold him before that. What I've noticed is the adjustment from Lorena, protecting himself a lot more, not leaving any open gap on his face, because he knows the power that Melgosa has. And there's no doubt, Campbell, Loreda has that home crowd advantage, or home holla advantage here. He doesn't want to disappoint the fans that came out here to support him. And we're in the same position here as we saw earlier in this round. Lorena just pushing away. He needs to do something, push him off just a little bit from La Jaula. He can't do much from that position. I don't see much strategy right now. I see a little, no. a little bit of resting right now. Yeah, Lorena, he's trying to get something here, whether it be full mount, but Melgosa is not letting him. That left leg is in the way. And now he's been maybe uh -oh. for a heel hook, maybe for something here, the legs around. Kind of seemed a little dazed yeah. and confused there. Now some shots from ground and pound maybe. A few seconds left in the second chapter of the bout. And we're headed to the third round. We'll be back with more. Vamos a hacer una polea un poco más inteligente para llevarlo hasta un ratico a mitad de round y ahí volverle a encender la candela. Pero no te me vayas a dormir, ¿ok? Acuérdate, está abriendo demasiado a la izquierda. Si tú te la anticipas, le puedes meter la derecha por el centro, por el centro, y te lo, pues te lo está tirando así, abierta. Esta derecha le va a entrar en hit, para acá, ¿ok? Sí, ahora vamos a actuarle un poco más inteligente. Pim, pam, pam, ahí le da, dándole golpeo, dándole golpeo. Y después vamos a meterle la maquinita otra vez. Ok, si se presenta la oportunidad, va para el picho otra vez. Él no tiene la lucha tuya. Ok, so, vamos, vamos. Vamos. Let's go. 
And here we go, the last five minutes of this round. One thing that I just saw, Campbell, Loretta standing, Melgosa was on the stool. Just yeah. goes to show it, you it, here. Look at, he's sort yeah. of gasping for air. Yep. So Loretta has all the confidence. Love those kicks from him coming from different angles. He's setting up for that KO potentially with those kicks. Loretta smells, he knows that his opponent is tired. Great yeah, no, you're right. In. There's three different angles oh, to the Oh, there it is, Campbell. Yeah. He was setting him up. There's that kick. He looped it, but very sweaty. Cousin to lost his footy. He kept, see, he got got cut. Can never sleep on your opponent, Campbell. No, he did. That was the same thing he did before. And he got that punch in. And you guys straight I, down I, to the ground. I, you can see the corner here. For Loreda to pass the guard. Had a choke, maybe. Now, get to remember, there's a lot of sweat now at this point. Yeah, they're slippery. It's going to be hard to pull that off. See the open but scoring. Judge is seeing it towards Loreda. Rightfully so. There's a lot of variables here, but he could go into mount here to go for a ground and pound. If he's able to position up, the giving the back. Great position for a rear naked, but Melgosa keeping on that right leg of Loreda. And this takes away so much energy from you, Campbell, from Melgosa. If he's already gassed out in this position, putting all that pressure, all that power. And then and what his opponent's gonna look to do to stand him up and get a couple shots. Yeah. I like this fight. It's That's competitive. It's competitive. Very chess game like. Yeah. When they got three minutes, a little less than, little three minutes and change to go. Chorlera is cornered, telling him to finish it off. And you can see there, Melgosa just gasping for hair. Air, look at the mouth open. I would love Laredo to finish this off in a very dominant fashion. I think that'd be great for Spain, it'd be great for Combate, it'd be great for him. I mean, I think he's gonna win the fight, unless something goes. But then, then you go to say, okay, he won the fight, but decision about how, you know, why not, did you not finish it if you had the opportunity, right? That's what sets that fighter apart, yep. that stands out. And remember, he's coming out of a split decision. And he has, he has all the opportunities here. And there it is. Working away here. Just turn around just a bit. But Melgosa doing a good way of positioning that leg. Now, there he goes. There he gets into trouble. Sprinting around. Melgosa hanging on it. We were talking about. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the Spanish tie. <laughs> but we were talking about it, Campbell. Not the Peruvian. Not the Peruvian necktie. The Spanish necktie. <laughs> I don't know if he did this on purpose, but boy, how sweet it would be if he would get this one. He needs to just put in those knees, but his leg, Melgosa's leg is in the way. Yeah, That's no, just, just not allowing him to finish off the job. Right back into guard. You have to put the pedal in the metal right now, especially for Loreda. He wants to win this one in fashion, not by points, not by the judges. Now, at one point in the 170 division, uh, Campbell, Loreda was it. He was the guy. So if he wants to take that position, he needs to prove why he belongs there at the top here in Combate Global. Less than a minute to go. A lot of just back and forth from the guard. Melgosa trying to push him off. See how he has his two feet right in the hip. But good way of Loreda just keeping himself on him, not allowing him to go anywhere. Yeah, no, he's still dominant. He just can't figure out how to close it here. Less than 30 seconds to go. Loreda trying to see if he could get this victory, not by a judge's decision, but by his own decision. 
But I think it's going to be a too little too late. And you hear the corner, let it rain, but not with five seconds left. You're not going to get that win like that. That was just their we get corner. Ready to That's Campbell. some combate personnel <laughs> coming over to. <laughs> Lorena right. seems to have win this bout. Not in the fashion he wanted, but we'll find out after the break. Now we're gonna get the final results. Marcos Loreda All right. and Rogelio Mendoza. I, I, I heard you, Campbell, and I said, hey, I love it, you're representing Spain. <laughs> He's like, you, you apologize. You know you wanted that victory in fashion, but hey, yeah. a win is a win. Campbell, I see a smile on you, we're okay. We're about to get the official result. Beatrice, let us know. After three rounds of much more action, this is the final decision. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión oficial. Judges Vicente and Richard Green turned identical scorecards to 27 to 30. Jueces Vicente Rodriguez y Richard Green entregan tarjetas idénticas de 27 a 30. El Theater Crutcher entrega tarjeta de 28 a 29. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Todos a favor del ganador por decisión unánime. Marcos Lloreda! Two fight win streak for Marcos Lloreda. He said as soon as that bout, he looked at two Campbell. He said, sorry, but I am the number one Walter Way. Maybe that's the reason why. We got more action headed to the main Espana. card here in Combate Global. We'll be back right. with the main card. And there we have it, the first bout of the main card. Lupe, Mateo, and Blue searching for her first professional victory. And in the jaula, and Mariana Rodriguez making her debut. She flew all the way from Spain, so you bet your money that she wants that victory. Rodolfo Roman alongside the left and Mr. Campbell McLaren. We're headed to the main card, opening it up with the ladies. And Campbell, there's no doubt in my mind that the ladies always come for battle inside La Jaula. And these two, about the same. Yeah, I think, you know, we've sort of made a name for ourselves to combate and putting on just great, great, great female fights. And uh, some of the newer fighters want to come out here and really prove themselves. We've seen Lupe before. We like her. We want to see her do a little bit more. And I think uh, Marina's idea is to, to come here and kick her head out of La Jaula to have it go into the stands. Well, my have someone catch the head. <laughs> Mateo knows what she uh, knows to do. She said she fixed her flaws. Rodriguez knows what they're all about. That's the head to head. 27 years old for Lupe, 33 to Rodriguez. Height there, just two inch difference between the two. And the one of 5.4 to 105 to Rodriguez. Enough of me, let's go to Beatrice for the introduction. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Este es el evento coestelar de la noche. We continue with much more action. This is the co-main event of the evening. Los jueces son, the judges are, Dorian Mirasola, Vicente Rodriguez, and Richard Green Jr. Y ahora, llegó el momento de un combate global. In the blue corner, en la esquina azul, vestida de azul, wearing blue. Su peso oficial, 105.4 libras. Her official weight, 105.4 pounds. She enters La Jaula with one defeat. Entra La Jaula con una derrota. From Homestead, Florida, Lupe Dynamite Kid Mateo. In the red corner, in the esquina roja, vestida de amarillo, wearing yellow. Su peso oficial, 105 libras. Her official weight, 105 pounds. She enters La Jaula tonight to make her professional debut. Entra La Jaula para hacer su debut profesional. De Sevilla, España, Marina La Faraona. El referee, Christopher Mignot. Got it. 
Cuídate todo el tiempo, escúchame todo el tiempo. Si quieres tocar guantes, toca. Buena suerte. And there we have it, Mariana Rodriguez making her debut in La Jaula, her professional debut as well. And then Lupe returning here. Would it be 2-0 for the Freedom Fighters, Campbell? We just saw Marcos Loretta picked up a win. Lupe can carry on on that momentum. She seems focused. A lot of focus. She has very quick hands, Campbell. Great stand-up boxing. She told me that. I've been working a lot on my takedowns, and that was one flaw that we saw last time around. Yeah. Her opponent was taking her down, taking her down. You know, Lupin had that opportunity to finish it off. She just didn't capitalize on it. But Cam, I'm pretty impressed here with Mariana. I, I would have never she known that she's, aggressive. yeah. She's bouncing around. She's got, uh, I wouldn't call it a great sprawl, but good enough to keep Lupe from doing anything. And she is exchanging, not holding back. And, you know, we, we, you've, you've heard me uh, talk about uh, Spain. It's kind of a hard, hard country to get a grip on in terms of the, the talent. There's real talent there. How experienced are they before they get to combate? That's what's been hard for Cheers, us. Cheers, my sir. We just had a toast here for coffee. <laughs> it's not coffee, it's cafecito. It's a big <laughs> yeah, get it right, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Lupe Mateo there holding up, breaking it off. And you hear the corner yelling, let it go, let it go. <laughs> and, and yeah, and Lupe, once she let, and she has a lot of gas in the tank, this girl can go on for all three rounds, five if you have to. Lovo Rodriguez. He's they didn't, they didn't do a lot of feeling out. Not here. whatsoever. No, they, they, <laughs> they go, let's go. They're coming in. I love how Rodriguez is using that feint with the kicks, with the punches. But Lupe is not faced. She comes in right at her. Yeah. Oh, 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 Campbell. Boom. That's what Lupe wanted. Welcome. Wow, she clocked her. <laughs> Great hand. <laughs> From Lupe. There's a lot of confidence in the young lady right now representing Homestead. And Homestead doesn't get a lot of love, but they are known for the races down in South Florida for Homestead. Number of a, Mexican immigrants in that community, too. I was about to say too. that, yep. A lot of Mexican. We get, Homestead gets love here. We love Homestead. Great car racing, I love that stuff. Right now to the clinch, Rodriguez playing a good role here, trying to compose herself, getting herself back in the fight game, in the yeah, clinch. I was going to give her that. She, uh, she recomposed herself. She got clocked. I love this fight. Good stuff. You know, we, we say here, we sounds like a broken record, but it's the truth. Our women deliver. They never hold back. Now Rodriguez going for the takedown, but good way of Lupe blocking that, stopping her. That's that work she's been putting in the gym. Felt a little flashy there with Rodriguez, the spinning back fist. Yeah, it's become, it, the flash is back in MMA. <laughs> <laughs> Not the movie, because I heard the movie didn't do uh, well, but. <laughs> you know the movie. Um, Great yeah. action there. Yeah, they're going toe to toe here. Yeah. Great head move for Lupe. Now, now, I'm a fan now. I'm not even commentating anymore. I'm a fan. <laughs> and if you Great trip. You hear any, uh, if you hear and you don't speak Spanish, you hear eso. It, it means like that. That's it. That's it. And you hear it a lot in this fight. Eso. That's it. And we're only four minutes into this fight, Campbell. Just like the great side there to the kick. Push her off. Corner here in favor of Looper, telling her to show her what you're about. Her camp yelling, she's getting desperate. <laughs> I know, I heard that. I'm not <laughs> right. sure that's right. I but don't know it's right either, but hey, sure. <laughs> so, if it, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, One, two punch there. But, but you see what it is? She'll exchange for a bit. She feels Lupa's power, and she'll bring it and to the clincher to go for the her. take. Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah. That's the thing. So it shows how much of respect she has towards Lupa's power and strength. And 
There's that take, but good way. And that's that work that Lupe's been putting in. Been very difficult to put it out. Good exchanges of knees. Boy, this is the first round. I can't wait for the second and third. No. Great stuff from these young ladies. Lupe in search of her first victory as a pro. And Rodriguez, well, she wants to ruin the party and get her first victory as a professional. All the way from Spain, Campbell taking a look at the highlights from that first round. As you can see, the power that Lupe had in those hands, but Rodriguez, she felt it and she went for the takedown yeah. or the clinch, but that was it right there, That Campbell. was it, and great uh, grit to have her come back from that. But look, she sat her down. Rodriguez coming in with that right. She felt it and she swung right back with a straight that brought Rodriguez to the canvas. And looking at these ladies' faces right now, it just shows that they are determined to put on a show here tonight. Who wants it the most? Who's gonna bring it? It's all at stake inside La Jaula as we go to the second round of Mateo versus Rodriguez. Round two, you ready? Are you ready? Fight! Chris McNochi letting us know we're ready to go. Lupe using that jab to make that distance between the two. Rodriguez can't find an opening. You know, it was the late Howard Davis Jr. Campbell who told me, if you can master the jab, you've mastered the fight. The jab is everything. Jab is everything. Gives you the distance, it sets up the punches, makes, you know, does damage. Jab is everything. Not all about that right hand or left hand, wherever your side is, the power is setting it up. And I mean, what, we, what we've noticed in MMA is the kick setting it up as we go to the open scoring, rightfully so. Judges saw it. That's what Mateo. we thought. Yep. Right. I like when the judges agree with me. <laughs> But as that old saying, Campbell, we never want to leave it to the judges. No, you want to impress. First, you know, the first round, we'll let them have some input. There's that scrappiness from Mateo. What I've seen here, that's, they'll slow off, they'll start off just a bit slow, and then just pick up the pace right after. Just like we saw in that first round, Rodriguez pushing her off, the exchange. R Rodriguez hasn't backed off. No, she keeps right in going at her. Yeah. As we mentioned earlier, when she tastes that power from Lupez, when she'll go for the takedown no, no, no. or for the clinch. Yeah. because maybe she got yeah. rocked and she needs a <laughs> moment. Uh, but look, she's not backing off. But I'm liking for Lupez, she's getting a little flashy. Oh, she's coming with a jab yeah. and switching to an elbow. I, I, I'm, I'm watching Lupe gain confidence during the fight. Right, right. She's just saying, oh, I can do this. You know, this is, this is when you go from your bread and butter, right? So then you get that confidence to say, okay, I've tried this in the gym. It's worked. Let me not try it in the fight. And that's when you bring that comfortableness to the fight. Because sometimes you don't want to do it because you, you don't have that confidence. You know, you know you can get caught. Yeah, you know you can get caught. I mean, it's not just confidence. <laughs> there could be bad, <laughs> bad outcome. But sometimes, right, in MMA, in the fight game, you have to take, take a risk. That's how you end up winning fights in an in incredible fashion. Take a look back at that Justin Vasquez knee. Yeah. I mean, anything could have happened, anything right? Did, and, yeah. and, he, and, he, and what came out of it? A highlight reel that went viral. And you can watch that man compete July 16th against Roberto Romero. That's going to be a doozy. That's a war. That's a war. You should not miss that. In fact, you should call in sick right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's on a Sunday, but <laughs> yeah. You're going to go a little, a little late next morning. Call, your, call the pastor. <laughs> call your padre. I'm not coming to church. I'm watching a war. They'll oh, understand. Oh, yeah. 
Another attempt there by Rodriguez, but Lupe counters with that. I love this fight. Overhand. These low kicks that Lupe's attempting or, or, or doing, you think they're they're adding anything to this? They're setting up the punches. You know, yeah, sometimes no you question. Damage. Right, and they don't, they don't, but it's it's more of a tactic to bring her in, to get her in, get her in a movement where she can lay those 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 strikes. Because in MMA, unlike other sports, say Muay Thai, you know, the, the, the kicks come with a whole bunch of power, but here it's just more for setups. But with the right technique, you can also deliver some pain and injury of during just the setup. She's look, not look. doing that. She, she, she's making them a Ooh. setup. Oh. Look at Rodriguez's left leg. It's already red. So the, the damage has been done. Right there by the quad tattoo, area. Isn't it? No, 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 right by the quad area. All right. The leg. Of the left I leg of Rodriguez, yeah. Yes, you a little are bit correct, sir. Up there. Then a strawberry. A contusion is formed. <laughs> so the damage is being done by Lupe with those kicks, and we've seen it over and over here, where some fighters may not do much for the stand-up game, but those kicks lead up to something later in the fight. It's almost like when you drive on gravel, you know, for a very long time, eventually those air comes out of your tire. It's an interesting analogy. <laughs> there's a lot of construction in Miami, Campbell. That's why I tell yeah, you, they got a flat because of that. There is a lot of construction in Miami. Yeah, that's why I got a flat because of that gravel. Yeah. Okay, we'll <laughs> right, here uh, we go. Let's watch it. I'm happy Campbell. to watch again. <laughs> Absolutely total toy here. Loop it. Just going right at her, but Rodriguez not holding back, Campbell. I'm impressed with Rodriguez, I gotta say. I think this is Lupe's fight, but Rodriguez has held her own. She I'd, like comes to, I'd like to see her again. Yeah, she see here that she's getting a little very confident there with those shots, those kicks there. I mean, this is her pro debut, right? Her pro debut, would have never thought. Look, she landed in that spinning back fist. That just shows that confidence that she has. I, love I belong here, man. You know, oftentimes uh, when there's a fight and I'm not commentating, uh, I go in when I really like a fight because right. I want to be in there with the fighters at the end. If I was not commentating, I would go in on this one. Right. Usually you're howl aside, hanging out, aside. watching the fight. Yeah. Are you ready? Round three, fight! There we go. Five minutes left in this bout. Lupit excelling in her performance. Those flaws, those gaps and holes that we saw from that previous competition are not here. Those takedown attempts from Rodriguez have been shut down, so the work has been put in the gym, and her striking has been on point. But Rodriguez, sure, it's her debut, but you would never know as she's bringing in You never the know fight. this is a pro debut. She's very never. calm, she's very confident, and she's just continually aggressive. in her early 30s. A young lady who's devoted her time to combat sports, started off with boxing and karate, and then transitioned to the full-blown mixed martial arts. She trains with Sutemi MMA. Coincidentally, she trains with Silvia Juneda, who will be taking on La Loba on August 5th. Oh. That, that's going to be awesome. Call in sick for that one right now. In fact, send a letter to your boss if you have a stand. I'm not coming August 5th. Call in that personal time right now. Right. You're not going in. No. Oh, great attempt there by Rodriguez. But Looper shutting her down once again. She hasn't been success, not successful at all with those attempts. We talk yeah. about the, the Loba, we talk about Vasquez. This summer is lining up to be sizzling Campbell here no, now. Know, Combate, Combate stars are really starting to shine. And, and, this is unofficial. You'll soon be able to place bets. On, Ooh, uh, okay. Fighters. Jimmy Pace Jr. up next with Boris Garcia. Yeah, there you go. Jimmy pointing right at you to shoot in. 
You know, that's, I feel that's like a good broken stuff, record, Campbell. I, I like I'm that all, news. Yeah, I'm always saying they got to impress me. But I, I know I say it a lot, but they got to impress me. I want to see Jimmy impress. These girls have impressed me. The girls bring it toe to toe. Nothing held in back. No. Spain being represented very well here tonight. Good night for Spain. Yeah. And their freedom fighters might pick up another victory the way it's going. As we look at the real-time stats, 106 punches for Mateo compared to the 94 of Rodriguez. The kicks there, 30. Takedown attempts, one for Mateo. And Rodriguez, every time she goes for one, well, she gets shut down. Like some of her bridges here in Miami, they just shut down for no reason. They blame it on uh, birds, believe it or not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Miami has got a lot going for it, <laughs> I'm not sure uh, the closed down bridges really hurt. <laughs> Traffic is weird. Some yeah, of the worst yeah, drivers, in my started. opinion, in, 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 this, in this city, <laughs> including Boston's bad drivers. And I drive regularly in my home of Manhattan. All right, that's it. Esso. Esso. There it is. Mateo Whoa. feeling very confident setting it up with that. a jab with an overhand right. right. Usually when you see a fighter that just keeps striking with that jab is because she smells blood yeah. and she's going in for the end. Rodriguez, though, desperate, throwing in that spinny back fist. Throwing already about three I or mean, four. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Right. But right now she's impressing, right? You she's, know what? I'm, I'm going I'm to go into La Jaula. I got to go in for this one, you know. You're the boss. I'm going to be in <laughs> of there. Course. If you're watching at home, it's not some trick photography. I'm going to leave legit. the yeah, boots and I'm going to run yeah. in because they did great. They did great. I got to go. That is something that I'm sure when they see you in there, Campbell, they'll be very happy, win or lose. As we got 40, well, less than 48 seconds to go. Rodriguez. Wants that win, Lupe. Will she get that first victory as a pro and inside La Hala? Did Lupe take this round? Oh, yeah. I know she had the yeah, other yeah, yeah. two. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Lupe. crowd is behind the crowd her. Here chanting Lupe. Listen, you can't get more of an adrenaline rush than that. Any more motivation than what you're hearing, Lupe. The crowd is behind her. You got 15 seconds to go. Lupe exchanging, she wants to put an end, but Rodriguez now holding back, came in with her head down. Can't get too comfortable, can't be too loosey Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, team, wow. I'm going in there, I gotta go in. Campbell's going, going in, in and Hefe is impressed with this bout. Listen, to get the Hefe off his chair as a commentator, to go in La Jaula, it just goes to show you that both these women were phenomenal inside La Jaula. In my eyes, Lupe Mateo took this one, but listen, I am just here letting you know that judges have the final verdict of that. But we'll be back with the results after the break. And we're back with the results. We got three rounds of action. Who's the winner? We'll find out right now as Beatrice Callis. Let us know who won this foul. After three rounds of much more action, this is the final decision. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión final. Jueces Doria Mirasola y Vicente Rodríguez se entregan tarjetas idénticas de 30 a 27. Y juez Richard Green entrega tarjeta de 30 a 27. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Todos a favor del ganador por decisión unánime. Lupe Mateo! I could tell you that maybe the Florida Panthers and the Miami Heat won their finals by the loudness in this building of the support for Lupe Mateo. That's where they're cheating here tonight. Everyone definitely impressed by her performance. Even Campbell had to go inside La Jaula as we take a look at some of the action that took place between these two ladies. As I mentioned, El Jefe Campbell McLaren. Inside La Jaula impressed Lupe Mateo showing off that exceptional boxing. And the improvement was there. Look at that. 
Right hook took her down. Rodriguez right on the button. But Rodriguez showed that grit, that toughness and heart. She continued on. She attempted a few couple of takedowns, but Lupe Mateo fixed those holes. She says, that's what I needed to do to be a better fighter and take that win. And she did that here tonight. She will stop Lupe Mateo. Great performance, Campbell. You're joining me now. Yeah, I'm back. I just had to go in there. It was a great fight. You were impressed. That's why you went out there. Great stuff, and we're seeing some of the highlights. Look, there I am. <laughs> Trick photography. This, this, is, this ain't AI. This ain't no CG. <laughs> no, he literally walked and walked over there as we look at the stats. Yeah. 130 you, punches. You know, we'll, uh, we'll, you know, we'll, there's the stats. That's the stats. There, 130 punches. For Mateo, 118 for Rodriguez. Very impressive debut, though, for that young lady from you know, Spain. That's, and that's what I told her. I said, we'll have you back soon. That was great stuff. That's and, great you know, news. Uh, one of the reasons I can get in there so quickly, I think we put up on the screen at some point how to get tickets to come and see us live. The studio is fantastic. We can seat about 200 people in here. It's uh, designed specifically for Kobate. It's at Univision. It's in Doral in Florida. We're right next to Trump's golf course. So uh, relatively easy to find. And um, it's a great night. I'm also on Instagram, Campbell Combate. If you're interested in tickets, uh, reach out to me. I'll put you in the VIP section. Ooh, look at Campbell that. Campbell Combate. Good stuff. Uh, Elias Garcia coming up a little later tonight. He's taking on Diego Ortiz. But up next. Oh, yeah. The powerhouse. And, and, and ask him from Goat Shed. He's a character. Jimbo. Slice, a.k.a. real name, Jimmy Pace Jr. Taking on Boris Garcia. Lena. And we're back. We're back. This is the moment oh, that we've man. been hyping up. We've been talking about Jimmy Pace Jr. Has seen action only six minutes in La Aula. A little less than that, actually. But Boris Garcia flew in all the way from Spain and says, I'm going to put an end to your party. Let's meet Boris Garcia. Up next. Here we go. Yo peleo pues porque lo que me apasiona, lo que me gusta hacer y dar lo mejor en la jaula. Yo tengo un hijo eh, de un año ahora y mi mujer eh, también pelea, kickboxing, y bueno, ella es un gran soporte para mí. Pues para mí eh, pelear en combate, pues claro, es un paso adelante en mi carrera. Las promotoras en Estados Unidos están a otro nivel y claro, venir aquí y cruzar el charco siempre es una oportunidad, ¿no? Que hay que cogerla y, y dar lo máximo. Yo me imagino una pelea pues dura, como cualquier pelea de MMA. Eh, yo creo que se va a alargar un poquito y ya veremos quién aguanta. Eh, Jimmy, espero que estés preparado. No va a ser fácil para ti esta pelea. Eh, vengo con todo a ver qué tal. Boris Garcia, the man from Spain, trains with the MMA Barcelona team. Hasn't competed in some time. He's adamant about that, but he has a good excuse. He became a father. Had to take some time to take care of his family. But in between that, he was training. Campbell, he knows what he's at stake here. He knows who he's going up against in Jimmy Pace Jr. Sure, he's a trash talker, but this guy's pure diesel. Boris Garcia needs to put that aside and show what he's all about. Yeah, I think it's also, I think he's going to think he can outbox Jimmy. You know, he's got a purple belt, jiu-jits, uh, so he's confident. And um, I, I think he's not expecting Jimmy to take him down. I don't expect Jimmy to try to take him down. But I think he thinks he can outbox his opponent. Oh. We'll find out right now as Boris Garcia has entered La Hala waiting for his opponent in Jimmy Pace Jr. Let's meet Jimbo Slice. I got the craziest fighting style alive. Like, I go in there and I get it done, you feel me? I ain't got time to play with people. If I'm going there trying to play with somebody, at the end of the day, that give them a chance to even feel like they could get an upper hand. Ain't no upper hand with me. At the end of the day, I'm gonna beat your ass, you're gonna sit down, you feel me, and you're gonna take this lesson, you feel me? That's how it's gonna go. You don't judge a book by its cover, that's for one. But when I'm in my element, I'm in my element. I can't be stopped. I'm very violent, but control violent. Big Bucks, Pace 
Junior. I'm gonna give Kabate my all every single fight because I'm a knockout artist. So every fight gonna be a knockout. Every fight I'm gonna take care of business. You can't go wrong with a knockout. I want somebody to come to me with a raw raw. So when I knock you out, you feel me? I feel even better about it. My opponent, I'm gonna break him. You feel me? He don't get out the first round. Bro, I appreciate you for taking the fight. You're a real warrior. Just know I'm gonna kill you. So you see why we love him. Su oponente, Jimmy Jimbo Slice Face Junior. There he is, Campbell. You were yeah, saying that's saying, why we love I'm him. Sorry, I got so excited I jumped in front of B3s. <laughs> uh, this is why we love him. He can talk. Talk to talk, leaving him walk to walk, exciting fighter. Um, you know, our team of uh, Mike and Tony and Wendy are very excited about this guy. Tony Cortez, some of them are very excited about it. Christian Puas, some of them are very excited about it. But um, of those three, this guy's got the biggest mouth. Yep. He's got the biggest mouth. One thing I've noticed from his coming inside, and you know, this is already his second fight, and I knew him previously. I've seen him in amateur competitions in Florida. But his face is a lot different, and I'll tell you why. He's Right now, he's facing something with his family member who who's dealing uh, uh, with, with cancer battling right now. So there's a lot at stake here with Jimmy Pace Jr. And it's Jr. his brother, right? I it, mean, it's a close. His brother yeah. is, is battling with that. And, and, and this is the beginning one out. If you look at the head-to-head -head here, 33 for Garcia, 27 for Pace. The height there, 6 and 1, for f and 5 and 9 to Garcia. And the weight with 171.2 even for both these guys. Beatrice Callis, let us know who these men are. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Este es el evento estelar de esta noche, División Peso Welter. We continue with much more action. This is the main event of the evening, Welterweight Division. Los jueces son, the judges are, Theodore Crutcher, Doria Mirasola, and Vicente Rodriguez. Y ahora, llegó el momento de un combate global. Oh, yeah. In the blue corner, la esquina azul, wearing yellow, vestido de amarillo. Su peso oficial, 171.2 libras. His official weight, 171.2 pounds. With two victories and one defeat, con dos victorias y una derrota. De Barcelona, España. Boris Garcia! In the esquina roja, in the red corner, wearing blue, vestido de azul. Su peso oficial, 171.2 libras. His official weight, 171.2 pounds. He enters La Jaula undefeated as a pro. Entra La Jaula invicto como profesional. Desde Liberty City, Florida, Jimmy Jimbo Slice Pace Jr. El referee, Josh Roger. Guys, we already went over the rules in the locker room. If you got any questions, ask them now. Not. Listen to me at all times, protect yourself at all times, do everything you can within the rules and win. Most importantly, best of luck, God bless. Touch him up if you want to go back to the corner, wait for the bell. Josh Rucker is the third man in La Hala, Jimmy Pace Jr., Boris Garcia. You're hyped, Campbell. I'm hyped. We're way hyped. Let's go. <laughs> and it's of the not talking. the cafecito, uh, it's the maybe, fights. Maybe too. Maybe the two. adrenaline. Maybe a little Maybe cafecito. a little bit of that, yeah. They don't know what they're talking. They, they gotta. If we could just give some some to people, you know, and anyway, some cafecito right here, watching us. Cafecito <laughs> is the real deal. There it is. Now, will All we right. see that explosive? And this is the real deal. Yeah. Will we see that explosiveness right from the start? Look, from look Jimmy? at Jimmy. Like he's not even. He doesn't wait. Nothing. None whatsoever. He's going for the take up. A good way of Boris positioning his hips, not allowing him to go to the ground. Oh, oh my, my goodness! God. Campbell. Campbell! It was just a left hook from what I saw. And that's all she wrote. That's it. Good night. 
That's all it that took well, Jimmy Pace Jr. <laughs> I, I don't even know if we got a time on that. I, I know. I don't think so. It has oh. to be less than 10 seconds. <laughs> Huh. I think it was six seconds the fastest knockout in Combate Global when I did that right. But man, oh man, Jimmy Pace Jr. keeps <laughs> wrecking these guys. And they All right, I'm not surprised Jimmy won. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, surprised. look at this. He tried to, oh, oh right there is that beautiful left oh, hook. Oh, yeah. And you know what's crazy, Campbell? It was a left hook. It's not like he even put a lot of the hip into it. it was no, no, no. That forward. was all upper body. All upper body. That just shows you how much power that has. And I wanted to, I didn't even talk about it, but he was sparring with Sean Strickland, who is yep. a beast. And he toughened them up. And yep. if you could go in there with a guy like that, get your butt kicked, you're going to be a better fighter here today. And it shows here tonight inside La Aula. Wow. Wow. That guy is a phenom. And we will get the final, I, I want to get the timing of this after the break. Jimmy Pace Jr., incredible knockout. I haven't had the, quite the result, but it's less than 20 seconds, no doubt. That is just amazing. You know, the trash talking is put aside. It's all about respect, taking that fight. Boris Garcia took it. I don't know if, I, if Garcia can understand. I don't know if he understands really well English there, but Jimmy Pace showing his admiration and respect for competing inside. Here's a look back at the action, all the less than 20 seconds of it, right from the top. He goes in for the attempt of the takedown, clinches him. When he finds that position, he lands in that left hook, which is about to go bam, right there. Follow one more shot to put the cherry on top of that muffin. And Jimmy Pace Jr., Jimbo Slice, living up to the hype and the name, knocking out his opponent yes. in less than 20 seconds. We will get that actual timing right now in just a few seconds as our ring announcer, Beatrice Callis, will let us know the official result. Beatrice, let us know the timing on this. El tiempo oficial, 16 segundos en la primera vuelta, the official time, 16 seconds of round number one. The winner by technical knockout, Jimmy Pace Jr. Jimmy Pace Jr. off the cage, excited. It scares you some time when they get on top of the holiday. They can always bring an anchor, but hey, whatever. He deserves you know, it. He can do, do it. That. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> but we'll send them the memo for that. You know, other than <laughs> some people like loop a leg over. He what is it looked like he was on a skateboard standing. Yeah, up well there. they just they just let them know right now. Right. So uh, a gentleman uh, that did very knowledgeable in the fight business came over to me and he said, Look, Jimmy is a great fighter. But he's only going to become a really great fighter if you find someone to really challenge him. Yeah. And his suggestion was to bring in the fighter from Spain that we just saw fight and put those two together. Wow. What do you think of that? I, I am all excited for it. He needs to be challenged. He needs to be challenged. And, and let's face it, he has not... He has competed for six minutes. So we need to see what he's all about. But Diego Ortiz, Elias Garcia, next. Wow, phenomenal TKO by Jimmy Pace Jr. I just overheard, he said, if I'm not your favorite fighter, I'm your favorite fight, Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> this guy needs to get a book of all those lines he makes. I know. No, uh, he's a character, but he can fight. Absolutely. He keeps on wrecking all of his opponents inside La Hala. Now the question is, is his next opponent, will he test him? You men mentioned Marcos Loreda, who we saw compete earlier this evening. That be, could be a very good matchup for Jimmy Pace Jr. Jimmy, we guarantee you, we guarantee your next fight is gonna be more of a challenge. We guarantee it. And that is all about what he's all about. And we're gonna go right now to an interview with Jimmy Pace Jr. 
There's just a few seconds for waiting. Uh, he's very hyped up right now. <laughs> very excited. Well, we can hear him least. in the headsets. We hear him yelling at everybody. And here we go to Jimmy Pace Jr. He's on with our colleagues of Univision with Pedro. And we'll see it right now. And now Pedro, take it away. Pedro, adelante. One thing about the two things for sure. I talk a lot of shit. So we should have a toilet ready for me to always shit, you feel me? But I get all the belts, you feel me? With a coach like this, with my coaching staff, I know. I know. with the work I ethic I have, and first and foremost with God, you feel me? Nothing happens without him, you feel me? I have the highest faith, and I have the highest, highest possible doubt that I could be the greatest fighter that ever walked the planet. The first day I walked in the gym, my coach compared me to Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua fought in three different weight classes. My coach told me I'm one of the strongest person he ever, he ever met. He never thought I could make 170 because I walk around at 230. He didn't think I could make it. I could be a champion at any weight class. As long as I listen to my coach and I keep putting God first, and I work hard every day and spend 10 hours in the gym and sacrifice like I do every day. I sacrifice. I don't even have a personal life. I barely do anything personal. I barely go on dates. I barely even have time for a relationship. I have another, I have another thing to say to you. I want to congratulate you not because of your win, because of your heart. We know, we know, te lo digo en español. Queremos felicitarte. Right, we want no to congratulate you, not just for your victory, but because corazón, your heart. Because you know right now you're fighting in your family. In your family there's an illness. How do you put that aside? Focus oh. on the training camp and then be here. And this performing was great. So congratulations on that and tell something about it. It's, it's, it's really hard. It's hard knowing that my big brother is fighting cancer right now, knowing that my family has a lot of health issues and everything like that, like my mom and my dad, by, by them having me at an older age, being elderly. My dad turns 81 this year. So it's like a lot of pressure on me because at the end of the day, I just want to make my family happy, you feel me? And me seeing my brother fight every day, going through chemotherapy and everything like that, being a loving husband, being a loving father, and being there for his wife and everybody around him, that just pushed me to be strong. Like, I come from a family of hard work because I come from a mama that worked two jobs. I come from a daddy that provide. I come from a family that work hard. And at the end of the day, I'm going to work until I'm a millionaire because I'm going to be the best fighter in the world. And I promise you that as long as I got this coaching staff and I got this support system and I got God on my side, nothing can stop me. Nothing. I mean, nothing can stop me. Nothing. Awesome. Congratulations, brother. Congratulations. And we're ready now for the final bout here this evening. The main card, Diego Ortiz representing Guatemala. Central American country against Elias Garcia, a man that is no stranger to La Jaula. No. Undefeated here in Combate Global, but Ortiz wants to make a statement here this evening. Beatrice Callas, let us know about these men. Entering La Jaula. Diego El Terror Ortiz. When you think about Central America, Campbell, not too many fighters come from that area. We've had Jimmy Morales out of Nicaragua. We've had a few others. Salvador, Guatemala City, Guatemala, City, Guatemala Diego Ortiz El Terror. He says, I want to be that guy that stands out in Central America. There's a lot of promotions out there, but the competition, the level of competition is not there. Hence, they jumped to Mexico. That's what he did. He decided to go to Mexico, get his training out there, and now he's making his debut in La Jaula. So he's a chapin, correct? Chapin. Yeah, yeah. that's what he is. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an interesting part of the world, Central America. Some of the country's very troubled. Uh, difficult uh, political situations, a lot of violence in some of them. Guatemala's issue, I think, is they are, they've got their big brother Mexico so close and so dominant. And I always find with the Guatemalan athletes, in some ways they want to, like, like Rodney Dangerfield, they want the respect. They don't get any respect. And now let's go ahead and introduce to you his opponent, Beatriz Callas. Let us know about Garcia. Su oponente, Elías el Pescador García. García told me, Campbell, that he loves to fish, hence Fisherman el Pescador. 
Will he throw the right bait tonight? <laughs> oh. And will Ortiz <laughs> bite it? <laughs> you know, that's classic Rodolfo. Uh, that really is classic Rodolfo. Uh, Rodolfo Roman, a great, 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 great commentator for us here at Combate. I, I also think he's a poet. I think at heart he's a poet. He's a poet of violence. Um, you know, I, I, we've seen this guy a lot. Uh, some of our women fans say he looks like a novella star. He's a good-looking guy. Um, I, I think he's very representative of Kabate, right? Good fighter, good action. Uh, always fights with heart. Um, where is he with us now? I mean, what's, what does this fight mean for him? <laughs> right, right. And, and listen, he comes from a family of studs, cousin of the Pettis brothers, Training now out of the Team Oyama, but originally from the Duke Rufus camp. Straight out of high school, he went to train his skills in mixed martial arts, but he has much to prove in here. Does he continue with that winning streak? Ortiz is in his way. 34 for Ortiz, 30 years for Garcia. The advantage as far as height goes to Garcia. The reach, 66.9 to Ortiz to 64 to Garcia. And then the weight there, just a slight difference. Beatrice Callas, take it away. Continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo. En la división peso mosca, we continue with much more action this bout. In the flyweight division, los jueces son the judges are Richard Green Jr., Theodore Crutcher, and Doria Mirasola. Y ahora, llegó el momento de un combate global. In the blue corner, in the esquina azul, wearing blue, vestido de azul. Su peso oficial, 124.8 libras. His official weight, 124.8 pounds. With a record of 10 victories and 4 defeats. Con un record de 10 victorias y 4 derrotas. Fighting out of Guatemala, Diego El Terror En la esquina roja, en the red corner, wearing red, vestido de rojo. Su peso oficial, 125.4 libras. His official weight, 125.4 pounds. Con ocho victorias y dos derrotas. With eight victories and two defeats. From Anaheim, California, Elias, el pescador. El referí, Christopher Mignocchi. Vamos. Ok. Cuídate todo el tiempo. Escúchame todo el tiempo. Si quieres tocar, toca. Buena suerte a los dos. Chris Mignocchi with the final instructions before we get this one going. Ortiz, el terror. On the other side, el pescador. Round one. Elias Listo. Garcia. Will he continue that winning streak inside La Hala? Or where Listos? the da. Ortiz put the tear to El Pescador? We're about to find out right now. Campbell. Ortiz looks like he means business. Let's see what kind of business. In, he's a flashy fighter, very uh, scrappy. And one, th one thing I noticed, and you'll, you'll probably see it here, every time he gets hit, he smiles. He's the he's type of those sadistic fighters that just love to get hit. You know, I know he likes it. Garcia, though, the more technical, very strategical type of fighter. Plus, you got that veteranship. He's been in the game for some time. Comes, uh, you know, it's a family business yep. to an extent. But over here in Combate, there's no doubt he's had his success. Back in 2021, he made his debut. Rear naked choked Ivan Lopez. And in 2021, last year, defeated Leandro Soares by way of decision. In his resume, he counts on six wins by way of submission or TKO. On the contrary, seven finishes by way of submission and KO for Diego El Terror Ortiz. Hey, uh, I wasn't paying any attention to what you were saying. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm watching that's Ortiz fine. sort of trying well, to get good. the timing. Right? That's good. I mean, you see him, he's right. actively looking to figure out the timing here. Um, 
and they're, they're feeling each other out. But, you know, they're putting some some of the punches, some of the kicks are really got some power to them. Um, it, it watch Ortiz's head move, watch his eyes, and you see he's, he's really trying to get get the aim Ooh. on Garcia. I like that inside kick from Ortiz. It kind of wobbled there, Garcia. Yeah, he loves to throw those kicks, Ortiz. These guys, they, they, these guys are trying to hurt each other. Oh yeah. Great yeah, front yeah, kick yeah, to that the was chin. Good. Little Lyoto Machida style for those old school MMA fans. That's not old school. <laughs> I'm old school. 30 years, 30 years I've been doing this, folks. 30 years, November 12th, 1993. 30 years, who would have thought Changed it? Changed the world. Makes martial arts as a uh, global sport, practice all over the world. And Combate Global is the home where you're seeing some of these fighters where typically you don't think that they fight out of, right? But here you are, you've got fighters from Aruba, from Guatemala, Spain. So many other places. That's right. There's pockets of MMA developing all over the world. Oh, that hurt. Yeah, he's already connected with two calf kicks there that yeah. have kind of caught Garcia. Garcia, though, has some himself. You see that, that, that shivery there, that flaunt from Ortiz? Once he starts feeling it. It's another... Side kick, but getting hit, good way of Elias. Each of those shots coming in with a lot of power, but really respecting each other at the same time. Ortiz told me that he was training out of Guatemala, got wind of the camp in Mexico. And Tram and said, hey guys, can I go out there and train? They said, sure, go right ahead. And that's what he's been doing his camp. He's won uh, several grappling tournaments, but we haven't seen none of that groundwork here this evening so far. And Tram Gym's a very good gym. They've got some uh, great fighters coming out of there. Uh, I think they need to understand what Combate gives to the fight game. That was a good exchange. I think uh, Garcia didn't want to continue it, and they got locked up. What I'm liking from Garcia is he's keeping Ortiz away, trying to find a pocket to hold here to bring him down and work on him. Because Ortiz is not afraid here to just keep bringing it. He's getting, Garcia's connected with that front kick about twice already in the chin. Ortiz doesn't seem to care. No. Tell me, he smiles all the time and takes it. No, and he's cut he's you know Ooh. he's cutting off La Haula. He's keeping the center. He doesn't seem to back off. It's more like he's controlling the fight, Campbell. Few seconds left in this round. We live to see the second chapter of this bout after the break. todo lo que tiene, ¿va? Apóyate en la espalda. Bien. Venís muy bien, Diego, ¿eh? Quiero que cada tanto vamos a ponernos de derechos y nos vamos a tirar ese 23 una vez más. Pero no lo vamos a usar, ¿no? Vamos a hacer una vez más. Ahora. Eh, y la sabe que estás abriendo. Solo no te presures, ¿va? Y cuando ya lo tenés en la jaula, mira, él hace esto. Cuando pisa, ¡plá! Quiero que cuando he's slow as fuck right now. He's big as fuck, but he's slow as fuck. Keep touching him in the body. Stay off the straight line. He cannot see your jab. And crush him with that low kick, all right? Va? Estás bien, estás bien, papa, eh? Así. Last corner, giving some advice to him. He said, he is slow. Work on that. As Ortiz is corner, hey, you're doing great. Keep it up. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. But is, what is Garcia going to do? He's going to keep that jab pop, popping out. 
since he's slow, keep on working the jab, open up those holes, and then just push forward. Ortiz just does not respect those front kicks. No, none. You know, I wouldn't be shocked if one of those eventually ends up finishing the fight. <laughs> well, that, that would be a wonderful uh, <laughs> sense of justice. But I mean, he's connected. I got three of them already. And he, he's going right at it again. And, and I got to tell you from experience, Campbell, you know, when you get those front kicks, those teeps, those crank kicks, to knock someone out is pretty hard. You got to have a lot of power in there. Yeah. And also where it lands on the Exactly face. right. It's the right timing. Great shot there by Elias. Garcia again, he comes from that family. Ortiz with a calf kick. Landed a few already. Ortiz told me that he's been doing a lot of grappling as we go to the open scoring here. What do we got? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely so. Listen, folks, uh, Campbell Combate is my Instagram handle. Please follow me. I try to answer all messages, and I give away VIP tickets. Ooh. Campbell Combate. Oh, oh yeah. See, I'm telling you, he just shakes it I'm off. I'm telling you, he's sadistic. The guy loves to get hit, and he follows back. No shame in it. That he loves be, the pain. He would be a masochist. Then. Yes, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. The sadist loves giving the pain. There we go. But Ortiz not phased. He follows through with his own weaponry. As against Garcia's. What are we up. seeing in terms of his weaponry? So far, it's just been a jab. Calf kick, jab, maybe a hook or two. That's yeah. about it. Yeah. We got some blood. Yeah, we have, we've, we've seen some damage. The nose of Elias. You know, but that... You know, Garcia, I'm surprised he, and there's another. Oh, 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 my goodness. As we go to the real-time stats, but I didn't have time to talk about see, that yeah, after Garcia that. Garcia got yeah. in the kicks we were talking about. Right. Ortiz went, that's nothing, and whacked him. Right now, that confidence for El Terror is right there, and then he needs to follow up. He has about two minutes and change. This is the most of challenge uh, we've seen Garcia, right? This it, is Yes. This would be a huge upset yeah. if Ortiz were to pull this win here tonight. And a, and a good Ooh. lesson for Garcia. Ortiz, just he reminds me of uh, Diego Sanchez. Like to take those punches. I take like 50, 70 of them, just, yep. just keep hitting me. Doesn't matter. He'll smile at you. Great different transition from the kick. The now calf kick from Elias. Elias getting hit again. And backing up. Oh. Elias corner right. said he was slow, Ortiz, but <laughs> slow means nothing if the power is coming in. Again with that low calf kick. Elias already doing, has some damage in his nose. When they grab that, you see, when they do that kick, Campbell, and the fighter tends to swap it away, it's just, you just expose yourself. You know, the right timing, following it up with a left hand. But, but look, yeah. Ortiz is just teeing off on him. Yep. He's not worried about any counter. Now Ortiz open too as well. Right on the right eye, or nose, can't you can't see that? I thought that was Garcia's blood, actually. I, yeah, I, I don't know if that, I don't know if that's Garcia's blood that spilled into his face or oh. no. But I think I think it's from Ortiz. Oh, one way of putting in that high kick from Garcia, but once again following it up with that one kick assault from Ortiz. Oh, Garcia throwing the spinning back. Got another crack. Ortiz says, "No, no, not today, buddy." Woo. We'll be back.
it. We're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Take this in. Okay, this come, we need this round, right? We need this round. You got the first one, you probably got this second. But you're outscoring them at will, man. Don't follow the jab up. You're doing great with the jab. Double the jab, send that straight left hand at him. Or double the jab and rip that kick out your leg. Is it okay? Yeah. No. Then let that left low kick go, man. Left low kick, left body kick, right body kick. But we need this round, man. Right? For all the marbles. You got this round. This guy is tired of the squad, man. He's swinging for the fence. Move the feet. Stay behind your jab. Double the jab sometimes. I can't or, be with that knee. Or power the jab sometimes, right? But power up the jab sometimes. Last round. We need this, man. Come on. Thank you. Turn around. The bench. The bench. The bench. We need this round. That is what the corner of Elias Garcia told. Ortiz this scares young man. me. I'm not going in. No, Ortiz I'm is a, he's a Tony's savage. He's got to go in. Yeah. He is a savage. That guy is nothing is holding him back. And on the left side of Elias, he has a little mouse coming out right there. You can see it. And Ortiz does have that cut. Remember, we talked about that blood, Campbell. Is ooh, it is a pretty deep cut, Campbell. That is Doctors deep. looking at it. Yeah. Oh Lord. Get the super glue. Oh no, he's gonna need that gorilla glue. Glue. Oof. That looks. You know, Marco Huas used super glue way back in the <laughs> Back UFC. in the day. Yeah, he cut his hand training <laughs> and put super glue in. <laughs> so I wouldn't <laughs> notice. <laughs> ah, those are the good old days. The good old days. You could get around with those things, right? Yeah. Look at look at him. He goes, I'm happy. I'm cut. Wow. I'm bleeding. Round three, are you ready? Yeah, I'm not going in there. Are you ready? Tony Padilla. Uh, he reminds me of uh, Chucky right now. Woo. All right, here we go. Last five minutes of this bout. Elias Garcia in the red. Now he's going to the ground game. That is where he feels very comfortable, but Ortiz does have his fair share of experience. He's won several grappling competitions around Central America and South America. But Ortiz, see with that, it's scary, right? Because when you get that type of fighter, that zombie fighter, right? It just doesn't care, he throws. It, it doesn't, if it hurt him, doesn't matter. But you can he, knock him out, he or you can, out. right? You know, make him tap, but you can't scare him. But he'll keep coming at you, right? He's never, and now he's using a little head movement. Yeah, I saw a little, that. That was good. A he, little fancy, and he's going with that haymaker. That's all he's throwing those bombs. Garcia is a very controlled fighter, isn't he? You know, he has that that resume. He has that experience. He's been in there with a who's who. So he knows what to expect. Yeah, Ortiz just didn't read his resume. <laughs> who reads press. resumes nowadays, oh, yeah. Yeah, Who <laughs> reads resumes? I'm on my LinkedIn. I was on the, my opponent's LinkedIn page. You could do an, a resume on an AI account. Well, what is AI? You could do whatever they want, make it look good. You know, people worry about AI is going to take jobs. Not going to take the fighters' jobs. And here's the open scoring, Campbell. We got a nail biter. You got to work. You got to move. I can't do the math. Right. Who's got to win here? Oof. Anyone. And whoever <laughs> takes this one is going to win, win taking home. I'll tell you that much. It is a close one here. Right now, close to the edge. Either man needs to that was step an odd, up. That was an odd little thing up against the cage, wasn't it? Yes. That weird positioning. Again, Garcia Ortiz just going for the finish. Right now, he's not thinking about technique or anything. He just wants to go for a KO. But you can't, you can't really do that against a guy like Garcia who has that experience, who has that technique. Can't get too comfortable. You see, just at the right hand, he just keeps throwing it and throwing it. Good way of Garcia with that jab. That jab has been there all day for Garcia. He just needs to follow up like this corner set. Yeah, he's not put Ortiz in any real danger no. so far in this fight. He throws a jab, throws a jab. There he goes. There's a, a left now that he throws with power. Following it up with the knee. That knee would have hit there with good positioning and timing. That could have been it. And he's done that front kick over and over again. But I have to tell you, Ortiz, uh, 
He's an exciting fighter, taking these shots, smiling through the pain. Got hit with a spinning back fist, then continued on his own. A bloody Ortiz is. Oh, man. You can't see it from this angle right now, but when the camera turns around. El terror. There you go. That make a nice t-shirt. And right are, now. Right are we now, the just, sadists? Because we like this. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it just told, it shows how much heart, dedication, determination. When you're caught in that, and you just get, just get clocked again with that jab. That things like that just don't matter, you know. It's just a matter of continuing trying to get what you came out here for, and that's a victory. Now, I think Ortiz is being much more um, conservative Cautious. in yep. this round. I think, uh, I don't know what it is, if he's tired or he's just not seeing an opening. Well, he's, he keeps doing the same thing, which is that left hook following with a low kick. Garcia being a bit more creative, still working the jab, following it up with a straight. He did attempt that takedown, but couldn't conclude it. That's oh, that Mexican boxing there. right there, yeah, uh, yep. Campbell, that he yep. threw with that right hand, right to the throat. Ortiz feeling it out. He has less than 30 seconds to go if he wants to make a victory. But must say, for his debut here in Combate, pretty fun fighter to watch. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. The right matchup. He's gonna next fight to be a great fight. Attempt to take down from Ortiz, not happening, and now they're going toe to toe with the last seconds left of this round. Ortiz wants to prove what he's all about. Ah, oh. bloody, tired, but exceptional performance by both these men. They might have painted the canvas in red, but the winners here tonight are the fans. Elias Garcia seems to have taken this bout. But it is all up to the judges, but good way of debuting inside La Hala for the man from Guatemala. As we'll have the final result after the break here in Combate Global. I'll we'll be back. Three rounds of action from Elias Garcia and Diego Ortiz. We are about to find out who the winner is. Beatrice, take it away. After three rounds of much more action, this is the final decision. As después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, esta es la decisión oficial. El juez Richard Green anota 29 a 28 a favor de Diego Ortiz. 29 to 28 in favor of Diego Ortiz. El juez Theodore Crutcher anota 27 a 30 a favor de Elias Manuel García. 27 to 30 in favor of Elias Manuel García. Doria Mirasola anota 28 a 29. And the winner, by way of split decision, el ganador, por decisión dividida, Elias Manuel Garcia. Well, I felt the nerves, Campbell, when they were reading that off, because they could have gone either way in the way she that wrote it. That was great. But, Beatrice ooh. did a good job oh, building the suspense. Kudos. I didn't know. But there it is, Garcia, another victory. This one by way of split against Ortiz. But look, on paper, Elias Garcia, the more experienced one, but Ortiz, no shame, no way to walk. Leave the hollow with a head down. He came and he brought it. He shows that he's all about it, Campbell. Taking if, out those heavy, hard hands. If, if Campbell was a judge and they go, just who won? I would say Ortiz. Because of the grit, right? Yeah. That, 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 yeah. he, he was there yeah. to no, stand I think it. it. When you look at it round by round and, you know, break it down, I see why the judges went that way. But Ortiz smiling and dialing. Great performance as we go to the head to the stat, sorry, of Diego Ortiz and Elias Garcia. 66 punches for Ortiz, 85 for Garcia. 90 kicks, the difference here between the two. And the takedowns, two for Garcia. 
not much there with those takedowns though, but the effort is there and that can sway the judges as far as the way they go. We've had a stellar fight card this evening, Campbell. You know, you know there's a lot two. of MMA debate about, you know, how to judge takedowns, how to score takedowns. Uh -huh. Because sometimes they don't get you anywhere. But anyway, great fight. Loved it. That's a debate we could have over coffee, Campbell. We could go on and on for that one. But we'll be back here with more Combate Global. Mucha más acción. What way to kick off July, July 1st. And we have an awesome fight card that just took place inside La Hala. Great performances. A 16 second knockout by Jimbo Slice. Living up to the hype. And Living then the up ladies. to the hype. He's yeah. no doubt about yeah. that. That man can bring the power. But we kicked off the main card with the ladies going toe to toe. And what a fight it was. In fact, Campbell, you left the booth to go. I ran into the house. I there. climbed the fence. I needed to be in there. This was a great fight from these two. Uh, Mariana and uh, Lupe, just uh, her pre pro debut coming out of Spain. Lupe coming back to show us what she could do. Uh, I just thought, it was, you know, and there was some real, real, real action. Boom. You see that one. But it was a great fight all around. And as I uh, told uh, our Spanish fighter, we'll see you soon because she did a great job. And Lupe Mateo said, I fixed some of my flaws. I went to the gym, corrected some of the takedown defense, and included it in my offense. We saw some of that here tonight. But the power was in her hands. But Mariana Rodriguez, no slouch. It was her debut as a professional and in Combate Global. And it shows by per her performance that she deserves to be on this stage. She was not afraid to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a striker with a lot of power. She kept moving forward. Always moving forward. Always. It back Never held all. back. It just goes to show you that this lady wants to be here. It impressed you, Campbell? Uh, they both impressed me. Lupe, I was, you know, we had a feeling that she had it in her, and I was glad to see it this time in this fight. She got her first victory as a professional, as you're seeing right there. She attempted a Superman punch. That was towards the end of the battle. And the victory goes to Lupe Mateo making Homestead, Florida. Very proud with her win. And now, of course, the talk of the evening has been Jimbo Slice. Took on Boris Garcia from Spain, 16 seconds. You know, I didn't think it was going to go 20. I thought maybe about a minute or two. But boy, 16 seconds. That just shows it off. Boris Garcia came into this bout. He knew that Jimmy was all trash talk and he was going to put an end to it. But boy, did he do it. Well, you know, as I said, Jimmy talks the talk, but he walks the walk. And his power is literally explosive. And just Boris, it was just lights out. Wow, incredible. And uh, Jimmy got in a, you'll see, he gets in a tomahawk before the ref gets to him, but didn't matter. But what was impressive, Campbell, and you pointed it out, that the power came from the shoulders. You should yeah, do, you it was an upper body hips, punch. From the upper body. Yeah. That's all it was, all shoulder power. You know, in boxing, they always teach you the power comes from the hip, right? Yeah, the torque. But boy, this guy was just diesel. It's like a wrecking ball coming right to your chin. And if you saw <laughs> Boris Garcia there. Uh, look at Jimmy. I mean, just wow. look at, I mean. <laughs> Triple H took note of that, by the way. <laughs> Paying homage. Campbell, it's been a pleasure to have you here in the booth. Next time, I promise, I'll give you a seat right Howler side. <laughs> no, we should call it from inside La Howler. <laughs> Do you imagine that one? Do you know, back in the day, when I started the UFC, we thought about having plexiglass Skybox? walls. <laughs> like hockey we, style? Like, all the way yeah. around. And then we figured if people were smashing each other into it, it wouldn't be good. It was a great <laughs> night. Thanks for sticking with me. Next week, Jay Geron. Our French princess. princess. Oh, this was a this was a great fight. The ladies always bring it, don't they? We were speaking then, about the ladies. Yep. La Loba coming in August. La August Loba 5th. returns. Her hand is better, and she is saying she's going to use it. Absolutely, Campbell. Looking forward to the summer on behalf of the crew. Rodolfo Roman, Campbell McLaren. We'll catch you next week. Combate global inside la jaula. Mucho más acción. Let's go.